Okay, so the first blue card is Aracocra Sneak. Aracocra Sneak? I've never heard Aracocrans pronounced out loud, I don't think. Um, yeah, anyway. Aracocra Sneak. Three and a blue for a 1-4 bird rogue with flying. Flying rogues, I'm listening. <laughs> when Aarakocra Sneak enters the battlefield, take the initiative. Love it. Love it. Four mana for a 1-4 flyer. Big booty. Gives the initiative. Absolutely wonderful. Big praise. Big Oh. Follower. Regent Wolf. Thank you so much for following. I appreciate you. We're just hitting the blue right now. There's some spicy stuff in white, I must say. But I play mostly blue. Blue black. 60 40 blue black. I'm very excited for the blue. White was pretty spicy though. As it has been for the last like three sets, so. Not surprised. I'm loving all these rogues though. Alora, Mary Thief, two and a white for a legendary creature, Halfling Rogue. Uh, they are 3 2 power toughness. Whenever you attack, up to one target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. Return that creature to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. That's pretty cool. So, there's lots of rogue stuff that wants to get in for player damage. So, there's. Um, card draw on player damage there's uh you know death touch poison counters on player damage there's you know create tokens on player damage or get one ones or if you look at the last set there's lots of connive on player damage so giving something that can get in give you that hit bonus and then bounces it back to your hand so you can play it again next turn is pretty pretty cool I really like this card. And you get to choose a background, so if you decide to make Alora your commander, you can give them a background and get extra bonuses as well. Next up we have Ancient Silver Dragon. This is the blue version of the Dr Ancient Dragon cycle for this set. Six blue blue for an 8-8 eight, eight Elder Dragon with flying. It's a dragon, it has flying. Uh, whenever Ancient Silver Dragon deals combat damage to a player, roll a d20. That's going to be on all of these Ancient Dragons, so be forewarned. Draw cards equal to the result. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. I love it. That's amazing. This card is great. I love drawing cards, and I love having no maximum hand size. But it does have to get in for combat damage, so... Maybe this is an interesting card to play in your Allura deck. Give this thing sneak, so it gets in for damage. Draw those cards. Destroy your hand size. I mean, and you get to do 8 damage, which is just a bonus, right? Absolutely love it. Bane's Contingency, one blue blue for an instant. Counter target spell. If that spell targets a commander you control, instead counter that spell, then scry to, then draw a card. That's cool. So it's incentivizing you to prioritize um, countering spells that aim for your commander. You can pay three to just counter a spell, which is pretty standard. You've got a lot of three mana counters especially one blue blue There's lots of one blue blue counters this one in particular wants to help you protect your commander specifically because it gives you the scry to then draw a card i i like it i like it i like this art too pretty cool he's like turning into tesseret or something I dig it. Blur. Two and a what and a blue. I almost said white. Two and a blue for an instant. Exile target creature you control, then return it to the that card to the battlefield under its owner's control, then draw a card. 
three mana, blink something, draw a card. That's above par for sure. Candle keep inspiration. Oh, this art. I love this. Four and a blue for a sorcery. Until end of turn, creatures you control have a base power and toughness of XX, where X is the number of cards you own in exile and in your graveyard that are instant cards or sorcery cards and or have an adventure. So this is a picture of a bunch of wizards learning things and this card wants you to have a cantrip sorcery adventure heavy deck so that everything you control gets power and toughness xx x being however many of those you have in exile graveyard that's pretty cool there's not a lot of uh buff cards uh plus one cards that uh care about how many instants and sorceries you have Next up, we have Candle Keep Sage, two and a blue for legendary enchantment background. These are the backgrounds that you attach with your commander. Commander creatures you own have when this creature enters or leaves the battlefield, draw a card. That's pretty cool. So in order for this to trigger on your commander, you need to play this first. So if this is your partner card, and say you have Alora as your commander, you need to play this first for three mana, and then you play your commander for this to trigger. Uh, when this creature enters the, or leaves the battlefield, draw a card. So yeah, you play this for three mana, then play your commander for however many mana, and you get to draw a card. Whenever anybody kills it or you blink it, actually blinking it would be hype because if you, if you have this out, and then you use blur it exiles it and then returns it to the battlefield and you get to draw a card so so the order of operations is play this then play your commander which draws you a card then you play blur which makes your commander leave so you draw a card and then you draw a card off blur and then you draw a card when the commander comes back into play so that's three cards played and like six cards drawn. That is really cool. That's a fun little little setup there. Set up and pay off. Gotta love it. Cone of Cold is three and a blue for a sorcery. Roll a d20. One through nine, tap all creatures your opponents control. Ten through nineteen, tap all opponents. Tap all creatures your opponents control. Uh, and then they're frozen during their next untap steps. 20, tap all creatures your opponents control. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Until your next turn, creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. That is brutal. Um, it is pretty heavy and, you know, the two options you're going to get the most often are good, but they're not fantastic. And I hesitate to give this uh, a rating kind of just on the basis that if you fluke out and get a 20, it's exceptional. Um, so I would say this is about par. It's four mana, so that's pretty pricey. And it's sorcery, so you can only cast it on your turn. Uh, they're reprinting Contact the Other Plane. This card's fun. People play it in card draw decks. Um, I play it in my Quasa deck. Four mana, three and a blue for an instant. Roll a d20. One through nine, draw two. Ten through nineteen, scry two, then draw two. And then twenty, scry three, draw three. It's good. It's above par, I'd say. It gets a lot of play. I might have said par or less than par uh, when it first came out last summer, but after seeing it be played, uh, seeing how impactful it can be, especially in a great time of need, I think this card is above par. Displacer Kitten. This is the one everyone is talking about on Twitter. Displacer Kitten is a cute, cuddly displacer. Uh, for three and a blue, it's a 2-2 cat beast with avoidance. So whenever you cast a non-creature spell, instant, sorcery, enchantment, artifact, all of these things that aren't creatures, 
um, target exile up to one target non-land permanent you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So you get a blink, a free blink, a targeted blink, which is important. Um, it doesn't blink Displacer Kitten, it blinks whatever you want it to. So your commander, if you've got that draw card thing attached to your commander. Uh, yeah. Four mana for two two is not great, but the targeted blink protect your displacer kitten at all costs, and you get to blink if you're a instant heavy deck, uh, a big spell deck. Uh, you're gonna want a displacer kitten for sure. Iconic lore, five and a blue for an instant. This spell costs two less to cast if you control a dragon. And draw three cards. So. At best, this is a three and a blue draw three. So four mana draw three. That's par. Um, I would probably put it a little bit under par just because if you don't have a dragon, this costs six. And you don't want to pay six to draw three cards ever. Dragonborn looter. One and a blue for a dragon rogue. Hell yeah, dragon rogue. I never knew I needed that until just now. One and a two creature dragon rogue. You pay one to tap drag or dragonborn looter to draw a card, then discard a card. So it literally does what it's called. It loots for one mana and a tap. You get to loot. I'd say that's par. I kind of wish it had. Uh, maybe it was a two two or a one three. I think I'd love it if it was a one three. This thing's going to get killed so fast, so. I'd say it's par. Dream Fracture, one blue, blue, instant, counter target spell. Its controller draws a card, and then you draw a card. So again, taking that one blue, blue, counter spell. Long-standing history that Wizards has, and just kind of adding a little tweak to it. You get to draw one, but also whoever you countered also gets to draw one. Dungeon Delver, one and a blue for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have room abilities of dungeons you own trigger an additional time. So this is the Hama Pashar background. She was a legendary creature from the AFR set last summer that had this ability attached to them. Uh, but the dungeons sucked, so nobody played them. Eliminators, oh sorry, Elmin Eliminators, Elminsters, Elminster would be so mad at me if I pronounced his name wrong. Elminster's Simulacrum, four blue blue for an instant. Each opponent, for each opponent, you create a token that's a copy of up to one target creature that player controls. So look at your board. If this player's got something juicy you want, this player's got something juicy you want, this player over here's got something juicy you want. You get to make one of all of them for six mana. I'd say that's above par. The, the mana is a little steep, but I dig it. I dig it. Fey Wild Care. Look how happy this orc boy is. Look at that delicious beard and his big smiley face. Fey Wild Caretaker. Four and a blue for an orc wizard. He's got a three, four power toughness. When Feywild Caretaker enters the battlefield, you get the initiative. At the beginning of your end step, if you have the initiative, you create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy dragon creature token with flying. Cool. So this guy just helps you build your fairy dragon ar army. Um, there was another card in white, I believe. Oh, it was the white dragon. The ancient dragon in white made fairy tokens. Uh, so that's interesting. I like it. It's above par. Also, it's fun to look at. Look how happy this motherfucker is. I want to be that happy. I feel like if I was taking care of tiny little blue fairy dragons, I would be that happy. Although he does look like he lives in a cave. Do I want to live in a cave? Nah. Nah. 
Next up, we have Feywild Visitor, two in a blue for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have whenever one or more non-token creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy dragon creature token with flying. Such a wordy sentence. Whenever one or more non-token creatures you control. So it doesn't count the fairies that you make. Um, yeah. I guess fairy dragon token tribal is going to be a thing. That's above par. Font of magic. Three and a blue for an enchantment. Uh, mythic enchantment. I see you, orange pip. Uh, instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this game. Wow. So if you've cast your commander or your background multiple times, say three, then every instant and sorcery you cast costs three colorless less. That's pretty good. That's a mythic enchantment for you. Gale Waterdeep Prodigy. Look at this badass. This lightning fist. Two and a blue for a legendary creature human wizard. He's got one three power and toughness. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand, you may cast up to one target card of the other type from your graveyard. If a spell cast from your graveyard this way would be put into the graveyard, exile it instead, choose a background. So this is intense. This is like Leer. This is basically Leer. Except for you just have to play the game where it's like instant versus sorcery. And you have to have the mana to cast both of them. Whatever instant or sorcery you cast first. And then you have to pick one of the other type from the graveyard. That's really interesting. I think this card is going to be a lot of fun. See people build around. I think someone out there is going to build a ridiculous deck with it. It might be me. I'm not apologizing for anything. I'd say it's above average. Gale's... Redirection, three blue blue for an instant. Exile target spell, then roll a d20 and add that spell's mana value. One through 14, you may cast the exiled card from for as long as it remains exiled, then you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast this spell. Or if you roll 15 plus, you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost for as long as it remains exiled. Interesting. I assume this is like only going to play from your hand, but it doesn't specify from your hand. So I'm trying to like think in my head what kind of scenario would cause you to exile target spell from not your hand. I guess exile target spell from the graveyard. Can you exile something while it's on the stack? I don't think so. That's interesting. There's also Gale in the background here. The water deep prodigy. That's pretty cool. I'd say that's above average. I don't for five mana. I don't understand. You know how this card becomes amazing but i think it's it sounds breakable which is why i automatically put it above par if you can break a card make the whole thing crazy it deserves an above par rating goggles of night look at this guy in his little steampunk cosplay one in a blue for equipment artifact. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, scry one, then draw a card. And it costs two to equip. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Above average. It's actually, I'd say it's average. 
two to play, two to equip. Every time they, they have to do damage to a player. Try one, draw one. It's a it's a great payoff, but it's a little bit of a build up, so I'd say it's about average. Grey Harbor Merfolk. Oh my god, Merfolk Rogues. Love it. One and a blue for an O3 Merfolk Rogue. Grey Harbor Merfolk can't be blocked. Grey Harbor Merfolk gets plus two plus O as long as you control a commander that's a creature or planeswalker. So if you play your background first, this doesn't get a plus two. Um, and then once you play your commander out, then this can attack for two unblockable. That's that's good. That's average. Otherwise, it's just a one, a two mana, three toughness creature blocker. Basically a wall at that point. Uh, Illithid Harvester, four and a blue for a 4-4 four, four horror creature. Love horrors. It's got Ceramorphosis. When Illithid Harvester enters the battlefield, turn any number of target tapped non-token creatures face down. They're 2-2 two, two horror creatures. What? You get to flip? Oh, they're... Any number of target tapped non-token creatures. Interesting. And then I'm assuming his adventure, plant tadpoles. X blue blue. Tap X creatures. If they don't untap during their control is X next untap step. Exactly. So this adventure part of the card taps a bunch of things. The creature part of the card changes those tapped things into two two horror creatures so they're doing what illithids do mind flaying taking over somebody turning them into horrors i like it i kind of wish it was like named like i wish it wasn't just generic illithid harvester um but I guess then they'd probably have to make it like a legendary. That's above average. Above par for sure. Okay, this one. People were sending me this on Twitter. Imoen. Imoen? Mystic Trickster. Two in a blue for a 2-3 human rogue wizard. Rogue wizard. That's two of my favorite things. It has Ward 2. Love it. At the beginning of your end step, if you have the initiative, draw a card. Draw another card if you've completed a dungeon. Choose a background. So it's a 2-3 with Ward 2, which is awesome. It basically has... It's basically a 2-5. At the beginning of your end step, if you have the initiative, draw a card. So... The initiative lets you travel through the Undercity dungeon. Now, not every room in that dungeon has draw cards, so it's not Monarch per se. It also triggers at the beginning of your turn, not at the end of your turn like Monarch does. So it's like a, a, a twist on Monarch. It's, it's Monarch plus. New, new game Monarch. Uh, but this lets you draw as if you had normal Monarch at the end of your turn. And then, if you've completed the Undercity, or any other dungeon for that matter, you get to draw another card. You get to draw two cards every turn that you have the initiative. Interesting. I wonder if you get to draw the second card if you don't have the initiative. Probably not. You probably couldn't get into, into that. Uh, I, I love that card. People were talking about this on Twitter, sending it to me, because I guess because it's a rogue wizard. Um, and that's all I talk about is Demir rogues and horrors and whatnot. Uh, this is fun. This kind of puts that emphasis on dungeons, which is uh, not something I thought I was going to be leaning towards, but I might need to build a Mystic Trickster deck. Erinissus's file duplication. I Erinissus's. Erinissus. 
Irinkus is Irenicus is file duplication. Three and a blue for a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, except that token has flying and isn't legendary if that creature is a legendary. You can duplicate your commanders for mana and it has flying. That's fucking awesome. Love that. Love that. This is like uh, necrosynthesis, but better because you can copy a commander. Love it. Juvenile Mist Dragon, a 3 blue blue for a 4 3 dragon creature with flying, and it has confounding clouds on it. That means whenever Juvenile Mist Dragon enters the battlefield, for each opponent, tap up to one target creature that player controls. Each of those creatures doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So it's just a mass tap. Uh, that's pretty fun. Pretty fun. I'd say five mana for a four three flying. I'd say that's probably below par. I'd want it to be a four four or even a three five would be nice. Yeah. Not stoked on it. Below par. Kenku Artificer. Oh, our first Kenku. Two and a blue for a 1-1 one, one bird artificer. Homunculus Servant. When Kenku Artificer enters the battlefield, put three 1-1 one, one counters on up to one target non-creature artifact. That artifact becomes a 0-0 zero, zero Homunculus Artifact creature with flying. So he's basically creating th powerful Thopters, which is hype. Three mana for a 1-1 one, one obviously stings quite a bit. Um... But if you've got some blink, then every time you blink this guy, you can either turn a different artifact into a 3-3 three, three flyer. Or you can just keep pumping up the same artifact that you did the first time. I see that getting pretty crazy. Bird Artificer is a tough creature type to swallow because you're not going to get a lot of help pumping him up. I don't know why I gendered him. Pumping them up, the Kenku up. Um, with like other cards. I guess you can just keep putting counters on it or make it indestructible or what, what have you. But interesting card. I would say it's par right now because it, it may be just one of those cards that never gets played or never gets time to do what it needs to do and or people get scared of it um, it's hard to judge all of these cards before you get to play with them some of them are very obvious on their face what they're going to do and how they're going to play but this one is tbd so i'm going to give it a par next we have kindred discovery oh more kinkus three blue blue for an enchantment as kindred discovery enters the battlefield choose a creature type Whenever a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. So I guess you could, uh, going back on what I just said about the Kenku Artificer's creature type, you can name Bird or Artificer, and then you get to draw cards. Uh, I would say that uh, Kindred Discovery is par. Par, par, par. Lapis Orb of Dragonkind, two and a blue for an artifact. Tap and add a blue to your mana pool. When you spend this mana to cast a dragon spell, draw, scry two. That's pretty cool. Kind of taking those orbs of Dragonkind, which is a very popular um, thing from D&D &D and other RPGs. Um, orbs let you see things, and so scrying and giving you the blue mana you need to perhaps cast a creature, dragon creature spell. I think that plays out. I would say that's par. Nothing crazy, but you gotta love a good uh, tap to add mana and potentially scry. Modify memory. Four and a blue for a sorcery. Exchange control of two target creatures controlled by different players. If you control neither creature, draw three cards. So this is incentivizing you to switch two of your opponent's cards with one another. Which is really fun, actually. 
Um, I love the idea of handing one person someone else's card and you not changing your board state at all. And then you get to draw three cards if you do it that way. I think that's above par. It's a lot of fun. It's a little bit unique. You don't see that often. Moonshay Pixie. Three and a blue for a 2-2 two -two fairy creature with flying. When Moonshay Pixie enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to the number of opponents who were dealt combat damage this turn. So this is a post-combat creature, which if you're playing magic sort of correctly, most creatures are post-combat. Um, cool. If you're playing this in your fairy dragon token deck that we were talking about earlier, then... You know, you can deal a bunch of damage and draw a bunch of cards when you play your Moonshade Pixie. The Pixie also has Pixie Dust, a one and a blue instant adventure. Up to three target creatures gain flying until end of turn. That doesn't play super well in your Dragon Fairy deck because all of your Dragon Fairy tokens already have flying. I would say this is below par. It's it's good. It wants to be good. Uh, just misses. It shouldn't give things flying. Maybe it should give things like unblockable. That would be more helpful because if you're putting this in your fairy deck, your fairies already are flying. Doesn't make any sense. Mystery key. One and a blue for an artifact equipment. When equipped creature deals... Combat damage to a player, sacrifice mystery key. If you do, draw three cards and equip one. So three mana total, draw three cards. That's all right. I, yeah, I'd say it's par. It'd be above par if, uh, say you could scry three and then draw three, but you're paying three mana to eventually draw three cards. Not bad. Nimble Claw Adept, three and a blue for a two three dragon wizard creature with Big B's hand. Why you got Big B's hand? Big B's hand reads tap, untap two other target permanents, activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. So this is kind of like that uh Oh now I can't remember the name of the card. There was a, a Gnome Wizard in the original AFR set last summer that had tap this wizard and untap any other card not named this card. It's kind of like that, but you get to tap untap two, which is pretty neat. Four mana for a two three that lets you interact with your things. I think that's above par at common too. Like that's going to see some play for sure. Um, Commander is a, a game type where you see a lot of people going for that untap, retap mechanic. Um, you know, if you've got mana rocks or things that draw you cards or kill something or, you know, add a ton of mana to your mana pool, you tap them once, use Nimble Claw Adept to untap them and then tap them again. You know, this is, this is a combo piece. A big, a big deal combo piece, especially a common. So I would give it above par for sure. Uh, Oceanist Dragon, four blue blue for a three five dragon creature with flying. When Oceanist Dragon enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, and it's goaded. Pardon me. So a goaded creature has to attack if able, and it can't attack you. If it has other options. That's, that's below par. Six mana for a 3-5 that goads. Goads once. Like you have to blink it. No. Nah. Pseudo dragon familiar. Two and a blue for a 2-1 dragon creature with flying. Two and a blue target creature gains flying until end of turn. That's expensive and not powerful. You, you might keep this in a dragon deck if you're playing a heavy blue dragon deck. 
We might keep this in. Yeah, that's, actually, that's it. You're never going to want to pay three mana to make something flying when you can easily put a bunch of equipment in your deck that cost less than three mana that give your creature flying. Um, yeah, that's below par for sure. Psychic Impetus, two and a blue for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, you scry to. So this is again incentivizing you to goad or enchant other players' creatures, which is something that commander players have been doing for years. Not a lot of cards reward you for it in particular. This one does by, you know, you make your opponent's creature too, too bigger, goad it so that it can't attack you. And then whenever it does attack, and it will because it has to, you get to scry two cards. Pretty good. I'd say it's par. Uh, Renari, Merchant of Marvels. Three and a blue for a 2-4 Dragon Artificer, Legendary Creature. You may cast Dragon Spells and Artifact Spells as though they had Flash. Choose a background. That's pretty cool. Dragons and Artifacts become Flash. I'd say that's above par. It's not super exciting. Robe of the Arch Magi. Magi? Magi. Two and a blue for an artifact equipment. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, draw that many cards. That is hype. Uh, equip four, or you can pay uh, one to equip a shaman, warlock, or a wizard. This is a hype card. That's above par for sure. Uh, run away together. One and a blue for an instant. Choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hands. True love means always knowing what's the, on the other's mind. And this is like a mind flayer reading this little orc's mind. Well, that's not an orc. That's a... What's that other... That new race called? Can't remember. That's cute. I like that. I'd say it's a, probably about par, though. Like two mana, bounce two cards. That's... It's useful. Sailor's Bane. Oh, I saw this one too. Seven blue blue for a seven seven dragon turtle creature. The spell costs one less to cast for each card you own in exile and in your graveyard. It's an instant or sorcery or has an adventure. Seven seven with ward four. Yes, please. My only problem with this is it's not any of the things that are triggered by Runo Stormkirk. And it's not a horror, so it doesn't go in my Umbris deck either. I'd love to put this card in either of those decks. I just can't. I'm gonna have to make a dragon tribal deck. Sapphire dragon. Five blue blue for a five six dragon with flying. Whenever sapphire dragon attacks or blocks, scry two. It has an instant adventure on it. Two and a blue counter target non-creature spell. This is actually above par, I would say. 7 mana, 5, 6 with flying, and when it attacks or blocks, scry 2. That's already above par, in my opinion. Uh, add on to the fact that you get a an instant counter non-creature spell adventure attached to it. Above par. Love this card. That's pretty great. D hag. Four and a blue for a 3-5 hag creature. Really, they went with the creature type Hag? Not horror or... When Sea Hag enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent control get minus four, minus zero until end of turn. That's okay, I guess. I mean, it disincentivizes your opponents from blocking, which I guess is what you want. It has an instant adventure attached to it called Aquatic Ingress. Two and a blue, up to two target creatures each get plus one plus oh until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn interesting i'd say it's par it's it's an interesting it'd be above par if it had flash on it as the creature because then if someone's doing a big swing you could flash it in give everything minus four minus oh um i would also probably give it a plus if it had a better creature type 
Like if it was horror or even hag horror or uh, even zombie, what what have you? Witch. Actually, witch would be difficult too. One, you have to attach one of the words that are commonly found in magic. These kind of cards, like it doesn't make any sense to not to use one-off creature types. And I'm sure that there's more than one hag in Magic: The Gathering. I think that there's probably a handful, um, but it's odd. Brine hag, uh, desecrator hag. Well, I guess creature. So creature type hag is used more than once fair uh it's average shameless charlatan one in a blue for legendary creature legendary enchantment background commander creatures you own have two in a blue this creature becomes a copy of any other creature i love this especially because i like to play um lazav decks and there's lots of fun in duplication in mimicry this is awesome, above par for sure. Stunning Strike is two and a blue for an enchantment aura with flash. Enchant creature, when Stunning Strike enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature and remove it from combat. As long as enchanted creature isn't legendary, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So it's a flash freeze spell, pretty standard. Um, I'm just gonna run to the washroom real quick. I will be right back we'll continue with blue All right, where were we? Okay, next we have Sword Coast Sailor. One and a blue for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks a player, if no opponent has more life than that player, this creature can't be blocked. So again, incentivizing you to attack the player with the most life. Something you want to do in Commander most of the time anyway. I'd say that's about average. Sword Coast Serpent. Five blue blue for a 6-6. Six, six. Sword Coast Serpent can't be blocked as long as you cast a non-creature spell this turn. Which if you're playing blue, you're probably doing. Seven mana for a 6-6 six, six that probably can't be blocked. That's above par already. 
And then you add on the fact that it has capsizing wave for one and a blue instant adventure. Return target creature to its owner's hand. That could be yours, that could be theirs. I think this card is pretty great. And it's a serpent, so it goes in my Runo deck. I like it. Putting that one on my must find list for sure. Uh, next we've got Tomb of Horrors Adventurer. So a masochist. Five and a blue for a 4-4 four, four elf monk. When Tomb of Horrors Adventurer en enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, copy it. If you've completed a dungeon, copy that spell twice instead. You may choose new targets for the copies. That is above par, no matter which way you shake it. Six mana for a 4-4 four, four is below par. Um, add on the fact that it gives you initiative, makes it about par. Whenever you cast your second spell, you get a free copy of it. That puts it above par. And then if you've completed a dungeon, which you will want to progress towards with your initiative, um, you get two copies. So cast one spell, and it equals three times. Love it. Love it. Uh, Tamora's Invoker. Look at this fancy orc with his fancy hat. One and a blue for a 1-3 orc rogue. And he has sleight of hand. For eight mana, draw two cards? Holy crap, that's expensive. That's below par for sure. For sure, that's expensive, jeez. Eight mana for two cards. All right, moving on. Bow Candle Deep Researcher. Three and a blue for a two, three human wizard legendary with vigilance. Tap Val to add any, add an amount of mana, colorless mana equal to Val Candle Deep Researcher's toughness. This mana can't be spent to cast spells from your hand. Choose a background. So you can cast spells from graveyards potentially. If you've got the right setup, you could cast your your background. You could cast a spell in exile. Interesting. I feel like this is one of those. I don't see very many scenarios where Val is your lead commander because you're going to want one of those commanders that um, plays with Exile a lot. Um, yeah, it's an interesting card. I would say average. I think it has the probability to become above average with the right deck brewer and the right blue player for sure. Oh, it's my boy Volo. Itinerant Scholar. Two and a blue for a 2-3 human wizard, mythic. When Volo enters the battlefield, create Volo's Journal, a legendary colorless artifact token with hexproof and the, the Volo's Journal reads, whenever you cast a creature spell, note one of its creature types that hasn't been noted for this artifact. And then you can pay two to tap Volo and draw a card for each creature type noted for target permanent you control named Volo's journal. Choose a background. So I have a Volo deck. Um, that's just a standard Volo deck. Not, not a standard Volo deck. I have a, a deck built for Volo from AFR, the one that duplicates creatures. So it really leans into you having a bunch of exclusive creatures. So for creature types, you want one of everything, no duplicates, which automatically takes out humans and wizards. Um, as many variants on creature types as you can. And then this just kind of adds on to that. So instead of getting a copy of that creature, uh, this marks it down in a journal so that when you do pay two and tap Volo, you get to draw a card. So 
at the end of the game, you could be drawing like 20 cards for two mana. I think this is cool. I think there's a lot of setup. I think these are really fun. I think Volo is probably some of the most fun I've ever had, like brewing a commander deck before. It was really interesting to make sure and check my stat sheet to make sure I wasn't duplicating any creature types. And I think more things along the same lines, even though this Volo is a little bit different, I think that plays really well and, and is a lot of fun to brew, especially. Well, pardon me. Next up, we have Winter Eladrin. Uh, so the Eladrin are a mystical, arcane version um, sub race of elves. They all draw from one type of arcane magic or another. Uh, the Winter Eladrin is two and a blue for a two two fairy elf wizard, and it has Gust of Wind. When Winter Eladrin enters the battlefield, return up to one other target creature to its owner's hand. This is pretty standard for some blue mid-tier creatures that it has a bounce spell attached to it on its ETB. I would say this is very par. Um, yeah, it, there's nothing else to it. It's three mana for a 2-2 two, two with a bounce uh, Wizards of Thay. Look at these. This is the most metal band cover photo I've ever seen. Three and a blue for a 3-3 three, three human wizard with Myriad. So again, you get to create tokens um, for each opponent, other opponent you have when you attack with this. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. You may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. That's pretty powerful. I'd say that's above average. Four mana for a 4-4 four, four with a bunch of upside. Uh, that's good mathematically, no matter how you shake it. Young Blue Dragon. Look at this proud boy. Guy sits like my pug sometimes. Just sitting there all chest puffed out. Four and a blue for a 3-3 three, three dragon with flying. That's it. Five mana for a 3-3 three, three flying dragon. So that's below par. Uh, it has sand augury for one and a blue. You can scry one, then draw one. At sorcery speed. Not great. If this was just the creature side, this is below par. If this was just the sorcery side, this would be par. So I would probably chalk this up as below par. It doesn't impress me. Having a 3-3 three, three flyer is nice, but yeah. If it had like a small ETB or something, that would be great. That would bring it up to par for me, but as it sits, this is below par. It's at common, so if you're building a dragon deck or, or dragons matter to you, then, then maybe you get to have more than one of these if you're drafting this set. Uh, but yeah. Eh. Oh, and that's it for blue.